So I'm about to start work on the rudder, but before I do that, I thought maybe I would just for posterity's sake, uh, film a little uh, quick retrospective on my thoughts on building the vertical stabilizer since it was my first experience with building a real airplane part in my basement. And I thought maybe I'd talk uh, briefly about you know what things went well uh, and you know maybe what didn't go so well or the, the better way to put it would be I think uh, what things were easier than I expected and you know maybe if there were a couple of things that were more difficult than I than I expected going into it so uh, first of all things that were easier than I expected dimpling so dimpling with the c-frame uh, dimpler was easier than I expected I won't say that I thought it was going to be difficult but I had done a lot of research and watched other people's videos and people swear by the DDRT2 which is sort of the compression style uh, dimpler and to be perfectly honest that's what I intended to buy when I was ordering my tools but they were not in stock and were not going to be in stock for the near future and so I went with the C-frame and Again, I didn't expect the C-frame to be difficult, but people talk about how consistent the DDRT2 is. I was afraid perhaps it would take me a while to get good and get consistent with the C-frame, uh, but it didn't. It was, you know, it makes a distinct sound when you hit it the first time that versus the second time. The, the first time you, you kind of whack it, it sort of forms the dimple, and the second time it sort of sets it. Um, I tended to hit it three times usually, but that third time was maybe just redundant. Uh, I don't think you can over dimple, uh, at least not unless you just literally beat the crap out of it. So it that was very easy and uh, you know I don't regret now having the C-frame. I'm not gonna try and swap it out or anything. C-frame works great. So that was easier than expected. Priming. So I have a whole other video on why I decided to prime, what my sort of you know, mentality on trying out priming and what product I chose and why. Uh, but I, I picked up a, a two-part primer that I had to mix up and then spray with a spray gun. I didn't have any experience prior to this using a spray gun. And, you know, I had heard about how toxic this stuff is. And, you know, I wasn't, wasn't sure, you know, whether that was going to be easier, if it was going to be a big mess. It was a lot easier than I expected. It went very well, especially considering I, you know, I sort of learned as I went with the spray gun. It wasn't great. I'm still not going to go paint my car with it or anything, but uh, it, it was easier than expected. I'm definitely going to keep pri priming I'm the inside of the plane. I'm really happy with the results. I think it looks cool, so that's important. Uh, but yeah, priming, easier than expected, um, so I'm real happy with that. Uh, riveting the skin was actually easier than expected. I know I probably, you know, in the videos where I was riveting the skin, I talked about how I had practiced and I was afraid about reaching up in here and I was worried about, you know, having to bend the skin up and reach under. All that went, uh, was really, I don't want to say easy, but it was easier than I expected and it got easier quickly, which I think is the most important part as my you know, I developed the skill uh, pretty quickly. Not to say I'm a, I'm a pro at it yet, but you know, I managed to to do the work uh, without making a big mess. With I, I don't have any huge dents. I've got some imperfections. Nothing that's that bothers me one bit. Um, and I got better quickly, and I got more comfortable with it quickly. So, uh, you know, riveting the skin easier than expected. Uh, by the same token, bucking rivets in general was easier than expected, um, mostly, again, because the skill sort of came quickly or reasonably quickly. Uh, again, still have plenty of improvement that, you know, I, I still have plenty of room to improve, but I got to a, a level of competency that I felt like I wasn't going to tear something up uh, pretty quickly. And so, you know, bucking in general, you get a feel for it, you sort of learn it in your wrist, like a lot of other, you know, skills like that, uh, handcrafting type skills. And so I'm real happy about how that went. Drilling out rivets. So as well as the bucking went and even the squeezing, uh, you still have to drill out rivets sometimes. Everybody's going to have to drill them out. 
you know, even I suspect Cessna and Piper in their factories have to drill out a rivet every now and then. And certainly airplanes in maintenance, if a skin needs to be replaced or a fuel tank is leaking and needs to be replaced, drilling out rivets is a fact of, of life. And, but it's not without risks. So, you know, I was afraid when I had to drill out a rivet that I would not be able to stay in the center easily, especially on the universal head rivets, uh, that I'd, you know, wallow out the hole or make it oblong or, or too big. Uh, I, so far I've been real lucky, uh, with drilling out rivets. And so that went better than expected and was easier than I expected. It's not to say I won't, you know, mess one up and have to put in an oops rivet at some point or, you know, a bigger size shank rivet. But so far, uh, the, the drilling out in general uh, has been easier than expected. So, uh, what didn't go so well? What was more difficult than I was expecting? Um, so people are probably going to laugh at this comment, but squeezing rivets with the squeezer, I'm going to put that in the category of more difficult than I expected, not because it's difficult. And, you know, I want to stress that you know, in a, in, a, in a place where, given a choice, I could buck the rivet or use the squeezer, I'm going to pick the squeezer, you know, hands down. It's not that the squeezer is difficult. It's that it's not foolproof. Uh, you know, there were rivets I had squeezed with the squeezer that I had to drill out, either because I didn't hold it perfectly, you know, didn't hold it uh, square, and it, you know, pushed the rivet over sideways, or uh, a couple of times... The, the piston would come up and depending on the angle and how I was having to hold it anyway, you know, the, the rivet would bump up and, and get squeezed to where it, it wasn't flush. Uh, so, you know, again, squeezer works great, but I think I went into it with this expectation that it was just going to be, you know, very, very forgiving. And it is, but it's, it's not foolproof. You can still screw up. So, you know, watch what you're doing. Uh, and then the last thing that, you know, maybe wasn't as, as easy as I was expecting, riveting some parts of the skeleton. So I've got a couple of videos, you know, where I kind of whine about that already, but it, it just, there were a couple of spots with the skeleton where I, I struggled a little bit, had to, you know, find a way to hold the squeezer or ended up bucking the rivets. And, you know, again, it's not that that's hard, uh, it's just, I had this, you know, I went into it thinking, you know, this is no big deal. I'm more worried about riveting when I get around to riveting the skin. And, you know, there's some tight spots with the skeleton too. And, and, uh, again, no big deal going forward. I'll be better prepared, but didn't think about that. Uh, just wasn't expecting it going in. So, you know, I throw that into the category of more difficult than expected, not necessarily difficult, just based on my, you know, expectations going in. Overall though, I'm really happy with the results. Um, I had a lot of fun building this thing and I'm looking forward to starting on the rudder and it's it's cool to have a you know an airplane part in my basement that I built. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get going on the rudder now.